Okay, so we're going to start with this simulation using Honeybee, and we're going to generate two recipes, one for illuminance and one for illuminance. And looking at the Honeybee component, uh, it's looking for a sky file, and currently we're reading live a sky definition generated out of Lark that we just built. We're looking for some view names, and this is reading out of our prep section what we generated looking west and south. Uh, camera type is going to be one of fisheye, and that's pretty important um, to run Lark. We're going to need fisheyes. Uh, for the simulation type, we're doing two illuminates, and then we're setting the size and then the parameters. And the parameters are low quality, uh, one ambient bounce as this is just kind of quick and dirty troubleshooting, making sure everything's working right. You can up it to four ambient bounces when you're ready. Okay, for illuminance, uh, we're going to be using the same sky file. We're going to have some test points and vectors and currently we're reading uh, from out of the prep where we set up the grid points, the viewpoints, and the normals for our eyes so that we're getting that vertical luminance that can be used for the camera as view as well as the basically creating an illuminance meter at the eye. Okay, so what we're also reading into this is a file name and this is um, just a simple concatenation of uh, whatever your file name is going to be and in this case it's three channel and it's reading the view so I know it's west or south the sky file is what we just saw. This is live reading directly out of our three channel sky file path. And then our materials. So our materials uh, in Honeybee are, I'm starting with a pipeline uh, uh, out of uh, Grasshopper that's reading layer walls, which is live in the Rhino model, as well as door. It's putting both of those under uh, as a list of reps into the geometry. And then uh, this is a live, uh, as far as the radiance definition for the plastic, it's reading live. This void plastic Macbeth 3 is piped in. That all combines into the rad material. And if I uh, preview this, oops, uh, if I right click preview on, and I look, uh, there are what's selected is the uh, all the walls and materials so that um, uh, we know what's in there in the Rhino file. Okay, so let's go back to then all of these. So then the next one would be glazing and that's reading a live glazing, that fourth in Madison that we just built. Now there's some others in here that uh, we've in put generic materials that are not being read from a file or a library but are actually just literally typed into this notepad and uh, you can update those as you wish and um, these are more of placeholders so we really just wanted to demonstrate a plastic and a glazing and how those can be live into a, a run which also I don't recommend that you do runs live, this is more a demonstration. It'd be good to put them into a library. So when we're ready, we can run this. So we set the Boolean toggle to true. So we're running the luminance, that's done. And then uh, we'll run illuminance. And we've set CLARC as our directory in uh, working in Honeybee. So now that we've, we've really completed three steps so far. We kind of got our prep, our materials, and we've simulated, and now we're going to move into the three channel metrics. And when we look at it, it's looking for a picture, an HDR, in a, in a form of a file path, and so we're just going to link both the picture and the other input it's looking for is the irradiance, both of which are direct outputs from what we just ran. So here's a HDR file path output from Honeybee from the, our recent run, and the Illumi uh, Illuminance file path is a dot res. So those we're going to pipe right into this um, uh, Lark output, and we're going to set a folder name for that. Now I'm going to just do Mac3 for uh, 
I'll just do three for Macbeth three. We'll hit run. And it's going to create a bunch of Radiance batch files. And it ran successfully and we have a series of outputs. One, the current directory, so it's generated a folder called Mac3. And then we have two different rays, two Lucas and two Photopics. Uh, each of these pairs has a PIC file, that's an HDR high dynamic range image. Uh, one uh, it has another file that's an Illuminance image. And that's going to be true for the Ray, Lucas, and Photopic, so that you can see here are all the Illuminance outputs. And again, these are at your eye, so it's uh, on the vertical plane that we're measuring. And these two here are the circadian, and this one would be Photopic, so these are based on uh, your ganglion, and this is based on your cones. We have two sets of uh, two points one looking west, one looking north, so that's why we have two sets of data. And you can see that 186 plus lux are hitting your eye, uh, circadian lux, uh, with the ray curve versus 124 with the Lucas. So there is variation in these curves. They're similar when you compare it to the photopic lux, which is quite a bit different um, based on the color of the space and those uh, those curves. So this is very useful and we can definitely drive a design based on this but it helps as designers to really see spatially what's happening and, and where these differences are coming from so what's out being output here is for our Ray, Lucas and Photopic we have the HDR um, file pass so we can open up any um, uh, HDR viewer like HDR scope or photosphere and I'm going to just toggle to the uh, what we just named that, which was, uh, I believe, Mac 3. And we'll look at Lucas. And so keep in mind that all of these files are going to come up open uh, in grayscale. Because of the way that we're processing, processing them, uh, the, we're, we're not getting the, the color data. So what's important is that we actually look at these under Tools, False Color, and we set this to a uh, scale that's going to make sense for the amount of light time of year um, to see in false color what's happening with the luminance from a thousand to one we're, we're basically mapping in false color per pixel what's happening and so this is with the Lucas curve but what if we want to compare this to uh, the circadian or sorry the uh, photopic well, so we have Lucas and Ray, and those are both circadian. But this Lucas, or sorry, this Cal Calc three Lum is actually a photopic. And I'm gonna set this a thousand and one. So now that we have two similar, uh, these are both at the same uh, scale. We can start to compare them. And you can actually see that uh, there, there's there's a modest difference between the one on the right, which is what the cones see, and what the one on the left sees, which is the ganglion. And you can see there's some blue occurring on the ceiling plane at the back of the room relative to the window. There's no electric in this simulation, so it's all being illuminated from these north-facing windows. But there's really not a huge difference. Now, keep in mind that we ran uh, uh, Macbeth 3, which is a blue surface so really the circadian is is uh, receptive most receptive to the blue so that blue content that from the light that's hitting that wall is making its way to our eye and it's not a huge difference between the um, uh, uh, photopic and the circadian now if we do an experiment and we're going to change and let's see let's turn these off real fast we're going to Turn that off. We're going to come back to Radiance and turn these off. And we're going to go back to our materials, the plastic. We're going to actually change this to a Macbeth 15, which is a red color. We're going to see what the impact is to the circadian system. So we're going to set one path. I've generated another Macbeth file that's, uh, again, a um, text file with two columns. 
uh, one being the wavelength and the other being the reflectance. So we're going to set that. And right away you can see the channel output is uh, quite high in the red channel. So 0.619 in red, so this is certainly a red color. That's what's going to be reflected. And now you can see it's updated the name. That is being piped into the radiance run. We're going to need to rerun this. Um, I'm not going to change the names or anything, but um, yeah, so everything else will be the same. I'm going to hit run. That's running the luminance. That takes a second. And this is uh, with the slower or the faster low settings. Okay, it's just about done. And then we're going to set uh, the illuminance, run that. Okay, so then again, these this HDR file path and this .res file path are live and they're going to plug right back into our three channel metrics. And we're going to just change this folder now to 15 and run it. And running a batch radiance file. And now we're going to have different data, different files. Uh, so I'm going to try something and I'm going to open back in HDR scope. Okay, Lucas. Sorry about that. 1000 to 1. Apply. And same with this one, which, oh, I got to X out. Okay, so we've got, yeah, Mac 15, and we're going to do the loom, and false color, 1001. Okay, so both are the scaled the same, but you can right away see that where we have that red wall uh, is actually, if, if we look at our scale, and blue and purple are the lowest candela per meter squared, if I actually click into here, I'm just clicking right in this region on this back wall. I'm getting about 1.8 candelas per meter squared, whereas uh, on the photopic range, if I click over here, I'm getting more like 8.5, so towards 9. So there's almost a, a four, a multiple of four um, of light that's being reflected off this wall to my cones compared to uh, with um, what the circadian sees off a blue, off a red wall. Now, on the last run, they were quite similar, and it was a function of the color, and that wall being able to reflect blue content that was coming in from that sky back to your eye. And um, that's an example of a circadian three-channel workflow. Next time, we're going to pick up with a nine-channel. Thanks.